So we've got Wade on. Wade, are you here and ready to go, sir? Yes, I am here. Can, can you hear me? I can. You are now the presenter. We're waiting on you to present your slides. And with that, I would say let's take it away, sir. Go for it. All right. So I got 15 minutes. Uh, so thank you, guys. Thank you, John. Thank you, everything. Just a quick to go through the talk. Yes, I am mapping my network to the MITRE ATT&CK framework and then testing it for free while also trying to wrangle and thread intelligence. So real quick to show you the three tools I'm using are Attack Navigator, Detect, and Atomic Red Team. All of them are absolutely free and you can pick them up with a, simply on GitHub. The big thing what happened to me was my boss asked me, what can I detect and uh, how are we going to keep track of it? So me being stupid just jived right into it thinking it would be easy then realizing this was not an easy task. Figuring out what I can detect, I had to try to figure out a framework in order to judge the any type of attacks coming in and then I some spawned other questions like how am I going to keep track of all the attacks that I am detecting? How am I going to grade them? Then also I also work John's favorite thing, I do threat and tell. So uh, I also want to try to work that in as well. So the first thing I decided to really jump into is the MITRE ATT&CK framework. I'm just going to do a quick overview of it. Well, it appears that Wade is having technical difficulties with his microphone, and, uh, well, it looks like Wade is gone now. No, I'm joking, Wade. Here's your, here's your mic back. Oh, no. It looks like I muted him, and then he really went away. It was just a joke. I can't bring him back. I'm going to send him an unmute request on his side. Well, this blew up in my face. Uh, I thought it was going right, to be a funny was, joke. That was pretty good. You totally got me. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. You're back at it, sir. Have uh, at it. <laughs> All right. So just a quick overview. The MITRE ATT&CK framework, right? Ba <laughs> <laughs> totally based off of a cyber kill chain, right? Here's a huge picture of it. So just like you guys know, there's 11 tactics with 200 and around 266 different techniques. So my big hurdle was how am I going to display what I can detect out of this? The first thing I decided to do was to use Confluence. And so I made 11 Confluence pages for each tactic and then start, slowly started going through each, uh, <laughs> through each initial uh, technique and then writing my alerts in Sigma. Got about 60 techniques in when I realized this was not scalable and not good at all and uh, almost killed myself. So the one thing I found that I did like was the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator. So uh, the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator, of course, is also free. It's easy to use, easy configurable, runs off of Angular, Node.js. And then the main thing it consumes is JSON files. My last favorite is uh, there's plenty of free resources out there for it. Two big resources I found that a lot of people don't know that uh, MITRE provides is actual attack evaluations for tools and then threat intel on groups. Now, you got to take both of these with a grain of salt, right? You don't, can't trust them, absolutely. You can see when the groups have been updated last. You can also see when the tools are updated. But I used these in order to pivot off some other stuff. So here is an attack tactic, right? So here are all the Iranian attack tactics, known TTPs that they use. Really liked how this looked out, and I figured I could use this somehow to map what I detected. What's also really nice is if you hover over it, it gives you some basic notes and a little bit of, a little, does a little bit other things. If you notice, there's a bunch of tools on the right-hand side. I'm not going to go over what they all do, but uh, there's a lot of power there in them just because I'm, I'm going to run out of time. One of the cool things, too, is you can combine two different APT groups. So here's a good example of APT3 and 29, and then the legends down in that bottom right-hand corner really like this and my initial thought was uh, maybe I can edit that JSON file that gets uploaded into the MITRE ATT&CK viewer with my notes and maybe with what I can detect and make it look awesome. Originally I thought that I was going to write something myself in order to edit that JSON and then I was like you know what I'm not that great of a programmer and there's probably someone else out there who did it much better and what do you know there was. I found this program called DETECT which is uh, Detect Tactics, Techniques and Combat Threats so the main thing it does is it helps you map your visibility and detection coverage is the way I used it. It runs via Python 3. So it takes YAML files that you fill out and then pumps out the JSON files that the attack navigator uploads. So pretty easy to use, has an interactive mode, can run through some commands, fun, simple. So the way I used it is I, there's two data so files on there that are both YAML. One is data sources and the other is the administrator techniques file. So the data sources is pretty much what you're logging, right? There's 64 grading points on this 
and they're judging device completeness, timeliness, consistency, and retention. So uh, they have grading already set up for you, but you don't necessarily have to use their grading. You can just make up your own. So here is an example of the grading on the right-hand side. So for a good example, file monitoring, right? So I put in the products, do I have analytics for it, and then my grades. At this probably was the hardest part of doing all this just because uh, I got my team together, emailed them all this YAML file, and of course, none of them emailed me back. So then I had to tell them to email me, and then I only got one back, and then that one person sent me back a broken YAML file, which then turned into a headache. So I, if you're going to do this, I would suggest maybe printing this out or actually doing an in-team meeting and then discussing it. This also brings up a lot of questions on what your logging is and how you feel how good it is, right? Works out really well. Once you finish that YAML file, you pump it into Detect and it gives you the JSON file to throw into Attack and it looks something like this. So the legend in the bottom right hand corner shows you that the darker purple is what I'm logging somewhat decent to what I'm not logging great to white where you're not logging anything in that at all. I thought this was amazing right off the bat. I know what I'm logging. I know where I can build those alerts out. And I also, if you go to the next one, can give me, it also gives me a little bit of metadata on that. So the product on what's lo what can log that, a little bit of the monitoring, that type of stuff works out great. So that second file is the detection file. So I use the detection file in order to put on, to put verified alerts that I've written that I know that I'm logging. So this first example is a signed binary, pro signed binary proxy execution which is an excellent example because there's a million alerts I could write for this. So, and uh, if you see down in the comments, I actually have the alert names written down. I have the date, which is important, and I have my confidence, which is my score in that alert. And then also the location, which is in my EDR. They have their grading, same thing. You can use it or you can just make up your own. I, I'm not going to lie, I made up my own. After you pump that through detect, it pumps out that JSON file again, which gives you this. On a one to five shows you what you think you're good at detecting with the blue is what you're detecting and you have zero on and then white is maybe you're logging but you don't detect it necessarily. So it does the same similar thing as the last file is the data source file and it gives you notes. So you can see who it's applicable to, what your score is, and then maybe where that alert is located and then some technical comments if you have them, which is really nice. The next big thing was how do I get those files together? And what's nice is Detect will actually layer those files for you, which looks something like this. So the blue is what I have visibility in, the, uh, and the orange is what I have visibility in and detecting, and the white is where I don't have anything in, right? So I have, in this example, I have a lot of room to make up to start building out or at least verifying alerts within those blue entities. And another big thing that Detect does is, uh, if you guys remember how I said it was important to put those dates in the alerts, it also gives you a graph on how you're improving. So the reason I loved this is managers and VPs or whatever love to see graphs and love to see improvement. So being able to show them, hey, this is what we're logging and detecting, and this is our improvement, they go off the walls for it. One thing to keep in mind is this graph is based on a uh, MITRE attacks and not necessarily the alerts you've written. So for example, this may cover 25 different MITRE attacks, but you may have written around 50 alerts for this, which definitely happens. So the next thing that it also does is it does a little bit of stuff with APT groups and just pushing them all together. So here's a heat map of actually all the Iranian attacks from before. So what I did is I did some threat reconnaissance on all the Iranian groups, pushed them together into a single file using detect, and then it gave me this heat map on the attacks they're most likely to use or most known to use, right? You wanna take it with a grain of salt. Really good if, de if you can do this, which is layering those attacks on top of your de detections, right? So on this, the uh, green is what I'm detecting, the yellow is what I'm logging and not detecting, and the red is what they're using. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, green is what they're using and what I'm detecting, that's what it was. I totally forgot to put the legend in this one. So it also gives you that same scoring over there. This is excellent for a gap analysis based on APT groups. I used this when Iranian, when Iran popped off and everyone was all big and scared. And so I showed my boss like, hey, here's where we're at. Here's what Iran does. We're pretty covered. The next big thing, how I said how uh, usually managers love to see these graphs, right? So uh, one, I did help, the, help a couple buddies set this up. 
And one thing you can tell is like how sparse this graph is. And this was his graph. And so he went to his VP and said, hey man, like here's all my attack. Purple is what we're detecting. The white is what we're not detecting. If we were to get tool X tool and Y tool, we'd be able to cover this, which then starts a conversation on how much they're missing and the risk that they're really, the risk that they have for not having the correct tools. So this all leads me back to the detections, right? If you're logging, fine, but how are you sure that you're actually detecting what your detection file was written? So I used Atomic Red Team in order to verify all those detections that I wrote in the detection file. Atomic Red Team, super easy to use, right? Developed by Red Canary, it's organized by attack ID. The best part is it's automatable. Automatable, yeah. <laughs> So it has a PowerShell, Ruby, and Python. The right-hand side is actually a copy of uh, what the uh, automated Python is. You just give it a attack. So in this example, it's remote file copy. And then you can choose which, which type of remote file copy attack you can have it run. One thing I really like to do, though, is using the left-hand side is the YAML file that the automation is using. I tried to run all the attacks by hand myself just so I can understand how they actually work and perform, and if there is any difficulties on my system, actually me running them. Uh, it worked out really well. I actually learned a lot on both sides. So the only other really stuff I have to say is automation-wise, I'm trying to build some tools that go into all of my security vendor tools and pull out the alerts. I renamed all of my alerts and everything on MITRE ATT&CK framework, so having that T whatever, indicator in my alert rules. So for example, right now I have a script that goes through my EDR, reads all the alerts, and then edits that detection file and updates it for me. So now I don't even have to edit the files. It'll just automatically update. I have a couple other automation ideas, but I haven't really had them go all the way through. And that's it. Thank you guys. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out to the guys who made Detect which is Marcus Baker and Ruben Bauman. They, uh, they're on Twitter. They're, I hit them up a little bit and said their tool is awesome. Big thanks to Red Canary and Miter Attack. And uh, I'd also like to say one good thanks to John Hamm because he uh, actually gave me this idea a little bit. He sparked the flame when I was in his 5.11 Sands class. And that's it. Ugh. I know it was really quick. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. So <laughs> I've got a couple of questions for you. How long did it take you to tie all of this together? Surprisingly, this probably took me like a month. Okay. Uh, yeah, the hardest thing to really do was fill out the YAML file. Everything else mm -hmm. was pretty easy. Oh, I, there's a couple of big things I forgot about the, uh, the MITRE ATT&CK navigator. So running that yourself, it can run in a free EC2 instance. That's what I run all of this in. Or you can use theirs. What's nice is the ATT&CK navigator is actually runs in an iframe, and you can embed it into whatever. Cool. So instead of having my 11 Confluence pages, I embedded that attack, the MITRE ATT&CK Navigator into the page. So another question I have, whenever you're having, whenever you identify areas where you are a little bit deficient, are you using Sigma to try to generate those signatures to fill those gaps so it's more portable across SIM platforms? Or are you writing like signatures specifically for like Splunk or whatever SIM platform you use? So right now I'm not using Sigma anymore just because it was uh, that was the heaviest part when I originally tried to do it. Usually a majority of these alerts I'm using to detect is in my EDR. So I'm okay. using the EDR alerts. And there's a couple that I can write in Splunk and I go back and forth, but uh, I usually don't write in Sigma anymore. Okay, now that's just because, is that because Sigma doesn't support the flexibility and the syntax that you would get directly in Splunk? Correct. Uh, I, so, like, uh, I think the syntax for my EDR wasn't in Sigma at the time mm -hmm. I was using it. And yeah. so I was like, if I'm going to write it in Sigma, it's only going to be good for my SIM and not my EDR. So there's no point at the moment. Right. What was interesting, though, was going. I would go through Sigma and read the alerts and then convert those to my EDR. Okay. Then Jeff McJunkin asked a question. He said, how long would it take for you to do this in another company if you tried to do this again? Since it took you a month, you, you kind of banged your head on some walls. Yeah. How fast would it be to set it up again? Before I worked, so to give you, I work in a very small team in, in, in the fintech. And beforehand, I worked at a managed security provider. And I, the first thing I thought is like, man, people should do this as a service. <laughs> but I think it would 
as long as you guys had that YAML filled out, it would take me a day. The YAML thing, the YAML knowing what you're logging and you grading your logging is the hardest part. Yeah, and it uh, seems like that's kind of subjective a little bit. Like you got to oh, trust yeah. and set it up properly. Definitely. And that's why, so that's why you should probably should use their, their grading rubric just so you understand a little bit. I, mm-hmm. I'd say the other harder part is testing all the alerts in Red Canary because sometimes yeah. you'll test one and it doesn't work and you'll have to figure it out or you'll have to write a new alert or a little bit. That's more of like the yeah. constant improvement area. It, it, uh, it's oh, I, I love this. Jeff just said, uh, this is the one time I'm going to say Jeff, uh, I'm going to disagree with Jeff. Jeff said, sounds like you should fire all the Atomic Red Team things at once and see what's being monitored. Traditionally, I've had trouble with Atomic Red Team firing absolutely everything. It's better to take it in small, discrete sections. But I think the idea is sound, right? Fire it off, stimulus, and then see the response back on the logs. Correct. Usually what I would do is right when I get into work, I would fire off maybe two or three and then come back to it later in the day and see, okay, what did I see? I tried to use a couple other red team tools like Coldera and stuff, but I kept going back to uh, Atomic Red Team just because of the slim- simplicity around it. So like oh. everything, everything here is like a GitHub poll that I just pulled down, and I felt like Atomic Red Team was easier than Caldera. And I love Jeff's response. He goes, <laughs> "Nolo." <laughs> no, no, I absolutely agree, and I think that that would be the the kind of the holy grail is if you could fire off like Atomic Red Team and have it go all the way through and then have something like DTEC say, okay, you ran this. Here's what I was able to see in the logs. That would be just awesome. So, but time, right? Only so much time. Exactly. Yeah. It, uh, it worked really well for only having a couple people. I couldn't imagine if like a large enterprise had this and tried to like actively use it all the time. It's mm-hmm. a, I also really liked it just because the thread Intel part, right? So I'll do all my due diligence and then be able to show us like how we're doing against stuff. And I, and I think that especially, like as much as I have the seeding hatred for threat intelligence, <laughs> um, being able to answer the question to management, like, oh, my God, these Iranians are hacking us. Are we ready? Just to be able to show, yeah, we, we've got this covered. I think giving them some level of peace of mind that you're, you're not incompetent is a very good thing. And then final question, would you be willing to come back and do a webcast for Black Hills Information Security slower over an hour on this topic? Absolutely. Okay, very cool. We'll hit up would, Jason. I would, and get you in the schedule. Cool, I would love to do that. It would no. make my ear. Just being here, uh-huh. meeting this, doing this made my ear, and then meeting, I met you at uh, B-Sides in San Diego. That was uh, a big deal for me. 